should be grasped at the end of the day. Now, now, one thing I want you all to understand is very important. Now, right now, not to you, but it's very important that you know how to put a town with your suit. Now, how many of our suit? How many don't us? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. But look here. I know you guys are very talented. Y'all wearing y'all warm up suits and shorts and all that. Your jeans. You're more, more extra, extra talented. But we are trying to get you from the framework. And I was just aging my granddad. Taught me how to tie a Taught me how to tie a book At that time, I was like, we got it. But now, we wear it all the time. If you look on the board at our last month capital conference, those are high school kids right there. Do they have ties on? Yes. They have ties on. Now, this one right here may not be that well fit, but those are single loops, just like you see on that paper. Not double. Now, right here, this is fitting with Really. So when we go to these conferences, you guys, this is what you're going to see. Let's see if we find another one. Those of you who have to see some of the time, some of the time. Sound. 
You gotta remember the person on that bench is a human being too. He has personalities and she has flaws, just like we all do. And so how you present yourself before them can influence what, what the outcome of your hearing will be. Yeah, but brother, you said 16 and up. Yes. When, when, when you say it's a bridge between that age and age 16, they probably do not understand anything, how to dress, mouth rhythm, how to right. speak. And it just bridged on to that next level, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then you get in that rut. Guys between 18 and 20, y'all want to say four, is that period is going to determine your life. The exceptions to the rule, you might get to be 34. He said, me, I better get my stuff together. But between 18, when you get in high school and you get to graduate, and those four years after that, it's going to determine how your lifestyle is going to be. You're going to get it together, you're going to college, you're going to work, you're going to the military, or you're just going to sit around and run around and do what um, Judge Butler just said. You're going to come and see him. And he has to make a decision. And you don't want other folks making decisions for yourself. You know, telling you you have to go and spend 10 years, 5 years, 6 months, or whatever in an institution. Well, you got the opportunity to make a choice and make yourself better and make your life more better. And this is all what we are trying to do. Now, I know your parents are doing it, and, um, but we are just trying to chime in and us take more than one say to this. Well, I just want to interject too. A lot of times, I want you to think about that first initial contact you may have with an law enforcement officer. Because that's the first person you're going to deal with when it comes to dealing with law. It's going to be a policeman or a deputy for the, for the county or the city. And how a lot of times how you present yourself to them may determine whether they're going to let you go or they're going to take you to the court. You know, I, I think the worst thing you can do is an officer stops you. Let's say something happens in the school. Uh, an outbreak or fight or something. And the officer comes to ask you some questions, whether it's your boy that got in trouble. And instead of you talking to him with a you know, respectful way of saying, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Those kind of ways you say, yeah, whatever. I ain't snitching, I ain't telling nothing. It, 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 create, it creates a, a temperament between you and that officer. And you got to remember the officer is representing the law. And so by the way you project yourself to him, may determine what he may say, well, you know what? I'm going I'm to I'm file a charge with, against you for interfering with law enforcement. Because you're not, you're not assisting me with this charge that I'm trying to find out about. And, and you're, you're interfering. Well, if he was trying to break up a fight, and that was your boy, you're going to say, hey, get your hand off my boy. And you go in there and you try to interject. That's, that's, that's considered interfering with law enforcement. You know, I think the worst thing, and I'm just going to use this as a scenario, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be quiet, but let's say you're, you're in a car. This is a private sample. I'll pull you off. He said, good evening. Yeah, what we'll, we'll stop you for? That's, that's the, your response. Well, you made an improper turn. Well, can I see your license and registration? What would you guys say all that for, man? You just pulled me over. You know, why you gotta say all that? Instead of just saying, yes, sir, here's my information, I didn't realize I did, if you did, you know, you have a chance to go for a court if you feel like you were wrong. But the worst thing you can do is go out there and have an argument with the officer on the street. Because then, once you make him mad, what is he gonna do? What, what, what I just say, that be that number two, right? So, what is he gonna do to you? He's gonna probably try to find a charge on you. You know, just sort of conduct. I, I, was, I, I saw him do an improper lane change. I tried to talk to him. He was very rude and disrespectful to me. I tried to calm him down. And he cussed at me. That's just sort of conduct. You ain't got to put your hand on me. Cuss him. And that's just sort of conduct. If you, you say I'll whoop you behind him, that's assault. Okay, so you got to think about things like that. How you project yourself. You know, uh, me and Brother Little were sitting here and we were talking about. You don't get one chance to make a first impression. And saying yes, sir, and no, sir, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, will take you a long, long way. Practice doing that. Practice doing that. 
okay, we we gonna go. We ain't gonna vote you, but we gonna just interject and we go through this process. We gonna have a dialogue. Because I wanna see one day that you get the guy walk across that floor six, seven years from now. That some of the things that we talk about, maybe you in a book time, maybe you in a time, maybe you can walk with somebody, shake their hand, and introduce yourself to them. Those things are very, very important. Manualism, man, that's part of it. Not just how to set the table to eat, but how do you act? How do you present yourself? How do you present yourself? And the fly yard got shared with your mom on April 13th. We are going to get together and go and see this young man who played and who swim. I think he was in the Olympics. He, he, he's going to he's going to be here. Um, and we are going to hear what he has to say. And we're going to go as a group. All right? We're going to go as a group. I want to give it to you all. Well in advance, we're going to the ABC baseball game. You know, so, so um, just let your parents see that it's on April 13th. Okay, make sure you don't leave your handouts about the, the time because it's going to come in hand. It's not tomorrow. It's not this evening. It's something that I'm going to lead you to be ahead of the game. And what um, Brother Gavin say is separating yourself. Some of you guys would rather you with the mother too, the hang with the pants exactly. When the fight starts, you zoom across the hallway, or you zoom, zoom across the cafeteria, if you zoom in the bathroom, trying to be to see who's fighting. Or got your camera out and video. Y'all know each other. You know, I know about all y'all fights because the kids come to show it to them and You know, and I, and I say, you know what your career should be? A report. Because y'all got good footage of it. And so um, you guys got to understand straight wood, great swing, rocks. Hit the ends. Why y'all running to it? Why y'all running to it? You know, separate yourself from that mother too, because those are the ones that don't get green of the problem. And lastly, but these, these brothers in Brother Matt, he's an engineer from G. Brother Luke John and I, we are the education system here at Greenwood County School District. Brother Butler, he's a judge. Brother Hampton just walked out of here, he's in a, a, a lawyer, he's an attorney. Brother Springer, who's taking a nap over there, he's a retired finance person. You know, um, my man in that shop suit right there, Brother Rock, he's retired, but he's an educator, he's an artist. And we got Brother Austin down in the manufacturing mission. These guys right here is your starting from a network. Now you got your parents, you got your friends that you go to school with. What I'm challenging you now is to network with everybody in here. Because one day, you come across a situation, just like the judge Butler said, you might call him and say, this happened. Give me some recommendation what I should do. Or you need some stuff, some insurance. You can pick up the phone and call Mr. Wheaton and say, hey, this is Brother Nuggets. I was in the Capital Knights program, and I got a situation with the insurance. Can you explain this to me? It's who you know that's going to get you a lot of places going to get you into a lot of places. So network, when you meet these brothers, talk to them. See what they're doing, their career, and how they did it. And you can pick up the phone and you can call them. And if you're in a situation, you can always get out to see If you're interested in engineering, you ought to be talking to Brother Man. Or education, you ought to be talking to Brother Little John. Or matter of fact, you need to find these things out right now. Don't take it for granted. Don't let it slip up on you because time Know you today won't know you the same tomorrow. You need to know what you want to do, what direction you want to go into. All right? Yes, sir. You got two. Uh, you have two people that signed in. Okay, who had signed the paper? Raise your hand. 